Hi, I'm Yu Chen and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to share with you guys how to create a navigation bar like this using React. I'm going to show you exactly how I do this step by step. Here is what we'll be covering. First, let's see the design. The tool I'm currently using is called Figma. It's an online tool and there's no installation required and it's free. You can easily create shapes like rectangles, lines, arrows, and text using this tool. Now let's get into the implementation. We'll be using this GitHub repository throughout this video. So please take a moment to clone it and let's get started from there. Okay, so now I've cloned the repository and the first thing to do is to install the package using yarn. Let's take a moment to install all the packages. So now the installation is completed. We can start the example application. Now I'm in PyCharm Professional Editor and I'll be creating the components file for the navigation bar. I'll be creating a directory contains two files. One is the style sheet that contains all the CSS code and the index file that contains all the JavaScript code. I'll be using component name as the parent class name for the CSS style. And now in the JavaScript file, I'll be creating the template for the React components. I'll be using pure components to have the best performance. I'll be creating a constant called class name which will be used as a prefix for all the CSS classes so that it can be changed easily later. And now if we go back to the design, we can see that there is two groups in total if we look at all the elements. The first group is the title only, which is attached to the leftmost. And the second group is the menu that contains all the entries for each pages that are attached to the left edge. Of the layout. So in the code, we'll be creating elements to represent the two groups. The first one is the title, and the second is the menu. And in the menu, I will create all the menu entries, including the button. The first group will be called title, and the second group will be called menu, and each entry will be called menu entry. And the button will be called menu button. So now I've gave all layouts a CSS class name and now we can draft out simple stylings for each layout. So first, if we look into the design, all elements in the navigation bar is arranged horizontally. I will be using a display flex to make sure everything is aligned in horizontal. And now we can see in the second group called menu, all the element here is a range horizontally too, so also need to have a display flex for this group too. And now, and now I want to replace the old navigation bar with the new one. I need to export the components here before we'll be able to import it in the index of the application. Okay. So now I've exported the elements, and now let's import it, and we'll add it into the entry point of the application. Now. We would like to remove all of the unused routes and also remove the old navigation bar. So if we go to the home components, we just simply remove the layout. It should do the work. And now if we go check out the result. Okay, so now you can see all the menu entries are not arranged horizontally. The problem is possibly that because the CSS down are not properly applied. And now if I go back to check, we can see that the style sheet CSS file is now imported. And now if we import it, everything should work correctly. Now if we refresh the page, now it works. Okay, now we have finished HTML implementation, and now we can just easily replicate the design using CSS code. So if you press Option on Mac keyboard or Alt on Windows keyboard, you can see the margin between the elements and the edges. First, we'll make the width of the navigation bar as 100% so that it takes the entire width of the web page because all the elements is attached to the left side by default. And to make it attached to the right side, we'll use position absolute 
and make it attach to the right. And now if we refresh, you can see everything is according to design. Okay, so now the implementation for both groups are done. And we'll just go to design and looking at the layout here, copy the code for the title. And we'll want everything to align center vertically. So use align item center. And also we see the height of the navigation bar is 96 pixel. So make the height of the navigation bar to 96 pixel and line all the item vertically center. Oops, this should be margin left. And right now we'll be creating style for menu entries and menu button. For each menu entry, we'll also go to the code section of the Figma tool and copy the style here and also the text color. And also, we would like the website to be more responsive. So will change the color a little bit when each entry is hovered on. And we should show a pointer when we move our cursor onto each of the entry. And we see, look at the design. The distance between each menu entry is 64 pixel. And now we'll be creating the style for the menu button. And its distance to the right is 48 pixel. And we're also copying the style for the button over from the design to the code. Now if we click on the text, we can see the paddings between the text and the outside depth layout. So the padding should be 8 pixel to the top and to the bottom, and 24 pixel to the left and to the right. And the background color should be And the text color should be white. Now if we refresh, and now we can see everything is very close to our design. The location of the button is a little bit off. In this case, I also want everything in the manual to align vertically, center, and everything should work. And we want the button to be a little bit more responsive too. So we change the cursor to pointer when we hover on it. And we'll also change the color of hover to black. Now it should be background color. Here we would like to add a little bit of transition to make the hover effect more smooth. Now refresh back to the editor. Now we'll be creating links for our navigation bar. I'll simply go to the index page of our navigation and then simply replace each of these div elements using navlink. This navlink requires a property called to, to, which is a string that specifies what destination the current navlink will link to on click. Now let's go to the pages and then create a few directories for this community and resource page. Oops, it should be in page directory. And for each of this page directory, we would like to create the same index file and style. And we'll be following the same convention. So for the CSS, we'll be using the same component name as a parent class name. And then we'll be following the same format for the index file and then using the pure component class. What we're going to do here, we're just going to render the name of the component so that we can see which page we're currently on. And then we simply export the components. Now we have finished creating the community components page. We just simply copy that and paste and then rename it to resources. And then we'll simply change all the names that contains community to resources. So now let's go back to the app.js file and then adding routes to the community and resources. We'll be importing these two page components and then add it to the route. Okay, now if we go to the browser and then change the URL to the corresponding route, we should go to the page and we can see the component's name. So now if we click, that worked. If we click on the bike button, then everything should also work. There is a problem right now, is that we can't tell which page we're currently on simply from the navigation. We like to highlight the entry we're currently on for the page. 
we simply add a active class property to the nav link and the nav link components are automatically using the CSS style for the only active page okay that's not a good style let's reformat it all right now let's create this active class let's go to the style and then create a class manual entry active which will make it look like once user hover and click on the menu entry, the highlight will just stay there instead of disappearing. And now let's refresh the page. If you hover on it and click, it stays there. Now the home page is always get highlighted. This is because the home page matches the slash. And for every single page here, it has a slash here. So what we're going to do is add a exact property here and set it to true. Right now if we save and then go back and refresh and everything should work because the home only matches exactly one slash. All right, now we're ready to create our slider animation, but let's refer back to our design first. We can see our slider is located 8 pixels under our menu entries. Now let's check our menu layouts. If you click on the navigation menu, and you can see the menu is wrapped around our subscribe button perfectly on the top and bottom. If we are going back to our design, and we can see that the text in our button has distance between top and down exactly 8 pixels. So we can simply put our sliders at the bottom of our menu. Now let's go back to the editor and create a div element, which will be a simple rectangular shape. Let's call it menu slider. And we are creating this class in our CSS code. Because the location of the slider is relative to our parent menu, so we need to use the position absolute. And the starting location on the x axis would be 0 relative to our menu. Location to the button should be 0. Go back to the design and copy the rest of the CSS code for the slider. see the height is one pixel and the color should be black the width of the slider should be the same as each of the menu entry but for now we just give it a 50 pixel for test purpose this should be background color instead of color okay now the sliders has appeared and we can easily change its x position relative to the left of our parent menu to change its location and this will create our theoretical basis to create our animation now if we refresh the page the slider will move to the right exact by 16 pixels now we are ready to create the animation for the slider there are two critical information we required for this the first is the starting location of the slider and the second is the width of the slider the information can be acquired using the current active menu entry First, we need to determine the starting location of the menu, and then we can determine the active menu entry's starting location, and then we calculate the difference between these two distances to determine how much we want to move the slider from the starting point. And the next information is acquired by measuring the width of the current active menu entry. Let's get into the code. So first, we'll be creating ref for both slider and the menu. This will be called slider ref. and menu ref. We'll also need to initialize these two ref variables. We'll be using these two reference objects as a source of information when we're creating our animation. And now let's create the animation function. And this function should be called every time when user click on a new menu entry. First, let's get the reference to the currently active menu entry. This can be done using query selector function and selecting the active class that we want. And this variable can be value none during the first render, so we have to check. The function simply returns if the value doesn't exist because we don't want to render the slider if there is no entries active. Next, we'd like to obtain the information of the bounding box for both active menu entry and the entire menu itself. First, we'll get the bounding box information for the menu. The get bounding client rect returns the object that contains the bounding box information. And next, we'll begin the information for the active menu entry. Now we can determine the distance between the slider and the starting point of the menu. 
the horizontal position of the active manual entry goes first is because the horizontal location increases from left to right for browser and next we'll determine the width of the manual entry next we'll be using request animation frame to apply the style change using the distance and the width information we just acquired we'll be setting the style attribute of the slider wrap first We'll be making the slider visible, so we set the display to block. Next, we will move the slider to the current location of the active menu entry using transform property of the CSS and using translate 3D to move the slider. The translate 3D can utilize the GPU to achieve the maximum performance. We'll be only moving horizontally, so only set the first variable of the translate 3D function and leave zero for the rest of it. And lastly, we'll set the width of the slider. To call the move slider function, we'll need to call it after the first render is done for the components, and also when the component updates after user click on different menu entries. That way, use component deep mount, and also call the function when the component updates. Because when user click on menu entries, the update is done by the React Router library. So we'll need to import the with router function from the library to allow the components to detect the change. And now our slider animation is done. Finally, we will remove the hard-coded left position and remove the width. Finally, we'll add the transition to make the animation work. That didn't work. Let's see. Oh, we need to add pixel here. Okay, there we have it. And finally, we check the design. We see there is a shadow under the components. So it goes to the design, by looking for the box shadow for the design and copy that to our components. If we refresh, the slider will always have animation starting from the very left of the menu. That's a problem. So what we can do is we can hide the slider first and only show it after we have already dynamically determined the location of the slider. Now refresh again, and it works. And that's it my friend, thank you so much for watching. Please comment below if you have any questions, and don't forget to check out the description below where I include all the resources I used in this video. If you find this video helpful, please make sure you smash that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. I post a new video every week, and again, Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.